Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the manthatcanproject.com to find out more. The key is not spending time, but investing it. The Man That Can Project Podcast, a podcast empowering career-driven men to live more fulfilling lives. We are here to challenge your beliefs, redefine success, and talk about the important stuff in a relatable way. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. My name's Lockie Stewart. Let's get into it. Welcome back. Let's go back to the very beginning of the podcast. And one of the podcasts that was recorded in 2017, so when I was about 24 or 25 years old, was an episode on how I manage my time. And one thing I talk a lot about at our workshops and within the academy is how we control our time. There's a great quote, the key is not spending time, but investing it. So when we're clear on what we want from our life, what fulfills us, Um, what we want to experience, we then look at what we do as an investment, not as a chore. So an example could be my sister actually messaged me last night and I'm really proud of her because she is doing, similar to me, a daily heart. She's choosing her daily heart and she's been doing her 30-minute walks and it's extremely hot back in Brisbane. And she said, I don't think I'll ever learn to love exercise. I just don't like it. And I said, that's okay, just continue doing it and let's see if your relationship changes with it. And I think once we experience benefit or we are aware of the upsides, we start to look at it as an investment because same with money, another example for those who want an example. When we invest money, so you might put it in a house, you might invest it in your own personal development, you may invest in a weekend away, Sometimes it can be hard to part with the money because you'd rather see that savings in your account. But it's what you get from where the money goes. So for example, a holiday with your family might be the time that you guys need to connect and um, reconnect as a family. Putting it into an index fund, for example, over a sustained period of time may see your wealth grow. Okay, Investing in your own personal development may help you learn skills or create contacts that are going to help you earn more money okay so there's a shift that needs to happen but what I want to talk about is seven things that I do to manage my time so you may have some other ones and if you do whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify or wherever you're listening just drop in the comments I'd love to learn from you guys as well because I think this is everyone has ideas that work for them but this is what is working for me and as I mentioned I did this when I was 24 25 the last time I spoke specifically about this And I listened back, so if you want to go have a bit of a laugh, listen, I've grown a lot, I think a little bit differently, and I definitely have incorporated some new strategies to help me maximize my time so that I feel more fulfilled, I get to spend time doing what I love with those that I love. So number one, accept that I am in control of my time. When life is not going to plan, I always would use the excuse of I don't have time to do the things that maybe I wanted to do or I knew I needed to do to get a better or create a better life. So when someone would say to me, I don't have time to go to the gym, I don't have time to check out this opportunity, I don't have time to read that book, I recognize that I used to be that individual. And whether you, you know, there are things that you don't have time to do because it's a priority or it's not a priority. But when we are clear on what we want, which I am, it now makes it very easy to go, okay, well, I'm in control of my time. Therefore, I can choose to do the things that I want to do. And yes, you may work for someone, which means technically, you know, they tell you what hours you have to work, but it's also your choice to be going there. 
So think about that. But one thing I did was accept that I'm in control of my time. So therefore, if I'm not happy, if I'm not healthy, if I'm not earning the money that I want, or my marriage isn't going well, or my friendships aren't going well, that's on me because I haven't been prioritizing my time to invest in those things. So that was a really powerful shift for me and hopefully it is for you as well. So just to recap, accept that you're in control of your time. Number two, it's either a hell yeah or it's a no. And I have heard many people say this and it just makes sense. Quite often we're like, oh, maybe I'd like to do that. But there's a lot of things that maybe we would like to do. If it's not a definite yes or a hell yeah and it doesn't truly excite you, just make it easier and remove one of those, I guess, open tabs on your computer and just say no. You can always circle back around to it if you change your mind, but when you leave so many unopened, so open browsers on your computer, you're using bandwidth, right? You're not able to focus. It slows everything down, so it's just easier to close tabs as you go. So one thing, once again, I do, if it's not a hell yeah, I'm not doing it because I might want to use that time later on to do something that is a hell yeah for me. Like, you know, today doing the podcast, my wife's gone to go get her hair done, hanging out at the shops while she does that. That's a big fat no for me. So the hell yeah was let's do this. This will be fun. So number three, the one thing, there's a great book, the one thing. And if you have not read it, I would highly recommend doing it. And the general gist of the book is, do choose to do the one thing that if you were to do it everything else would become redundant or it would help progress them forward so every day i have that one thing and sometimes it's you know depending on the day of the week sometimes it's work focus sometimes it's relationship focus other times it's health focus generally monday to friday it is work focus what's the one thing that if i get it done today everything else will progress it will become redundant and it just really helps me knock that one thing over so that I feel satisfied, I'm making progress and it also helps me focus. Number four, or actually I do have a quote for that. I do have a quote for that. The quote for the one thing, the shortest way to do anything is to do one thing. So once again, you're not distracted, you're fully focused on that one thing. Let's go to number four now. So number four is a to-do list and for me, the to-do list is comes after my um, my one thing, right? Because there are definitely things that we need to do. And once again, they may be in the line of work. They may be, I have to get groceries on the way home. It may be, I have to respond to a few emails. Whatever it is, put that on the to-do list, but don't live and die by the to-do list. We can always have things to do. And that's how we become busy. And we'll go to one of my other points of delegation shortly. But I think it's very important to just focus on that one thing and be proud of yourself for doing that and then allow the to-do list to come next. So I do have a to-do list and it's always in my diary, but generally it's no more than five things. If I'm adding a bit more, I'll move it to a Saturday or Sunday and then it's out of sight and out of mind. But when I'm prepping for the next week, I can review those things and go, okay, which of those things that I wrote down during the week really need my attention or some of them may have just been you know a moment of energy where I'm like I've got to do that or I've seen a post or felt inspired to do something that is actually just distracting me from what is really important to me so that's another thing that I do number five my daily must do's or the non-negotiables we all have those things we are what we repeatedly do so if you were to look at your calendar and where you're spending your time And here's a little tip for you. If you can't see where you're spending your time, maybe you want to start using a diary just so you can see where your time goes because it'll show you who you're becoming and the results you're getting. So things for myself is I value my health, I value my marriage and my friendships, and I also value my business. Therefore, I have some daily must-dos. Now, the daily must-do is I must exercise, not only for my physical health, but for my mental health. It's awesome. It just helps me prep the day. I must read or listen to a podcast because I want to learn. I want to be inspired and I want to be challenged. So that's a a really important non-negotiable. Spending time with my wife every single day. It's extremely important. That is, you know, there's a great quote. The grass is greener where you water it. Water the things that are important to you. Okay, so think about what are the things that you must do daily, essentially the habits that you want to create that are gonna shape your life. And obviously then for me as well, work. I wanna grow 
and continue growing the Man That Can project and most specifically our Strongman of Value Academy because I am committed to or I'm on a mission to connect, influence and empower 100,000 men to live inspired lives. So therefore, one, I have to practice what I preach, you know, do things that inspire me, but I also have to be in the trenches because if people don't know, especially men, if they don't know that there's a way to connect, be empowered and influenced to live inspired lives through our academy, how will they ever change their life? How will they ever achieve that? So that's on me. I have to be networking. I have to be creating content because it's moving me closer to my mission. Number six, time chunking. This was game changing. I probably learned this back around the first time in 2017 when I did this episode the first time. But here's a, here's a quote. Realize that now, in this moment of time, you are creating. You are creating that next moment. That's what is real. That is what's real, sorry. So let me read that one again. Realize that now, in this moment of time, you are creating. You are creating your next moment. That is what's real. And that's a a quote by Sarah Patterson. So when I think about the next moment, it then helps me start thinking about how do I want to chunk time? For example, I might, you know, and let's use the three buckets that we always talk about. You've got health, wealth, relationships. And for me, I love to give time to those every single day. So the best way to chunk time so that you're not going to and fro is morning time. That's health and that's spiritual, physical, emotional health, mental health. And that looks like my exercise. That looks like my reading and development. Okay, meditation when I decide I want to do that, but also just having a coffee in the morning with my wife, just stuff like that, that really fills my cup. Okay, then we go into the chunk of time, which is work related. Now, once again, most people, if you're working nine to five, that's your chunk of time. And then we have the afternoon time, right? That could be relationship, that could be health, for example. You just design your time, but when you're putting things that can piggyback off the bat, you know, off, off each other, you're creating the next moment. So example, and this is how we create routines, right? This is the great thing about routines and owning routines. When I get out of bed, the one thing I have to focus on every day, that's the challenge, the big hard thing, I guess, is getting my ass out of bed. Sometimes I want to hit snooze, right? It's cold. It's minus 14 today here. It was bloody hard to get out of bed. But I knew that if I just get out that, routine is going to kick over. I'm creating my next moment. My next moment was to boil the kettle, start reading my book, rolling my feet at the same time. Then I would make my coffee, come over to this couch where those of you are watching on YouTube, and I would read, okay? Then I would write, and then I would get ready to train. So you're always creating your next moment, and when they stack, it works extremely well. One thing that I actually haven't put in here, which I think is important to put there, when you're time chunking, you want to make sure that your time is focused. So Avoid distractions, depending on whether you work in an office or you have people around you. you know, Amy and I here in Nashville, we have a one bedroom apartment at the moment, so we're technically living on top of each other. So there's an office downstairs, there's a sky lounge upstairs. So I'll always make time to go into those cubicles if I don't want to be distracted. Other things like turning your phone on, do not disturb, various other things like that, closing all the browsers, just so you can really focus in on getting the thing that you want to achieve completed. Now, the final one, aside from that bonus one I just gave you, is delegation. The first rule of management is don't try and do everything on your own because you can't. We are managing our life. We are managing the outcomes, the quality of the relationships, the quality of everything. So when you understand that the first rule of management is don't try to do everything on your own, you need to build a community. You need to belong to a community. Once again, it's why we started the academy. I wanted to have people that I could share responsibility with or who could challenge me on things or even upskill in things that then I could learn and get the shortcuts on that. And when I say shortcuts, I don't mean there's any shortcuts. It's just like, give me the overview of how you got there because then I can know what to expect if I decide to do a similar thing, okay? What a lot of people don't understand when they're looking to improve something, all the frameworks, right? All the skill sets are available for us to learn. What a lot of people don't share and what a lot of people don't talk about, which you can get through delegation of experience or listening to a podcast like this, is what's going on in the head. 
it's 80% psychological, 20% skill set. What's holding you back? Is it doubt, fear of judgment, comparison? There's so many things that are happening inside of us that we can get from delegation in parts of community, but also delegating things like outsourcing this podcast so that I can just do the content, someone else can create it. Uh, I can delegate other things in my business or you can delegate other things in your life. You know, Amy and I have, and Amy, for those who are just tuning in for the first time, Amy and I have our own responsibilities and roles. Some of them we've discussed, others we've just taken on board for ourselves, and that's okay. But Amy does the majority of the cooking, okay? I do, I'm the dish pig out of the house. But what we do by not, you know, sometimes we do it together because it's fun, it's nice, but, you know, we want time back. So while I'm cleaning, she might be playing the guitar and working on her craft And while she's cooking, I might be doing something that's helping, you know, I need to finish up for the day, but that's delegation. We're working together on a common objective. So just to recap, the seven things that I do to manage my time. One, I accept that I'm in control of my time. Two, it's got to be a hell yeah, or it's a complete no. Three, focus on the one thing. The shortest way to do anything is to do one thing. Four is to have a to-do list that you, you know, little sit behind the one thing. Five is your daily must-dos. We are what we repeatedly do. Six, time chunking. Realize that now, in this moment of time, you are creating. You are creating that next moment. That is what's real. The bonus that I gave you was avoiding distractions, okay? I managed times by turning notifications off, etc. And the final one is delegation. The first rule of management is don't try to do everything on your own because you can't. So, guys... I hope you got value from this episode. And if you're tuning in for the first time, make sure you hit uh, follow and share the episodes. It helps. One, I bloody love it. But if you have questions, connect with me on Instagram. If you're watching on YouTube, leave it in the comments. I'll be more than happy to hear your thoughts on this. And remember to support the Man That Can Project podcast in any way that you can. My name's Lachlan Stewart. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.